Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jess. So, uh, as she mentioned, my name is Claire Ford. I'm the founder of Still Aware. We're a not-for-profit organisation um, raising awareness to getting to know your baby and bonding with your bump in pregnancy and the importance of feeling empowered to stand up for you and your baby and knowing when to do so. And I'm the mother of two. I'm South Australian and I've, I'm pregnant with one on the way. So, very busy times ahead, I'm sure. And as I mentioned, and I probably should give you a bit of an in, in, uh, indication of where Still Aware comes from and why we exist. Um, Still Aware was started after the birth of my first daughter. Um, I mentioned that I'm a mother of two, um, Alfie her name is. She was born after a textbook pregnancy, uh, no congenital abnormalities, no blood disorders, nothing wrong with her. Everything was fine. I loved being pregnant. I loved bonding with her. I knew her so very, very well. But I wasn't given the tools to stand up and know when to speak for my child. Alfie was born at term, 40 weeks, nine months pregnancy, on the 12th of February 2014. And she was born beautifully, wholly, and I held her in my arms, but she was born without breath. So instead of her running around here today, she lives in my heart and that's the only place I can hold her now. So it's awful to think that this happens in Australia so incredibly commonly. In fact, six times every day in Australia a baby is stillborn. I don't tell you this to cause concern, but rather to give you the empowerment to stand up for your child and to speak up and get to know that little bub before your baby is born. Despite the fact um, that she was born without breath, I got to meet her so, so very well. I held her in my arms. I looked at her beautiful little face and her chubby little belly and her chubby cheeks. And I unfortunately had to give her back. So instead of leaving a hospital with her in my arms, I left the hospital with an empty arms and empty heart. I do not want that for anybody else in Australia or the world actually. So we're trying very, very hard to change that. She will always be my daughter. She'll always be my firstborn and I will talk about her forever, just as I would if she was here living amongst us. And it's for her and the six babies every day that Still Aware started to raise awareness, share knowledge and provide education to aid preventable stillbirth. Because what we do know is a baby's only direct link to the outside world is through its mother. And a father can actually help in this too. You can bond with your bump and get to know your baby so very, very well because you are your baby's best advocate. A mother knows baby best. You're the only one that gets to spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week with that child. So your obstetrician, your midwife doesn't get that insight that you do into your baby's health. So mothers have that unique um, ability to respond accordingly to their child's health and well-being and speak up for them. So we are empowering you to feel confident and comfortable to provide that voice for your unborn child. So at the end of this session, you'll be given the tools to help a mother and a family bond with bump and to monitor baby's health as well. So why are a baby's movements important? A change in fetal movement as I mentioned before, can be a sign that the baby is in distress. Although it's not the only thing uh, that does occur. In fact, it might be shocking to know that two out of every three mums that experienced a stillbirth say they did notice a decrease or a change or a regularity in their fetal movements. So it's important that all cases of a change or a regularity in movements are reported. It's important that you speak up. I cannot stress that enough. A lack of prompt management to this too has been recognised as a contributing factor to stillbirth. So I'm not saying this to make you feel alarmed. I am really telling you this because I want you to be connected with your child and feel empowered to speak up and do something for them. So connect ba daily with your baby in your third trimester. And why, why do we say this? What can a baby, what does a baby development actually happen throughout um, their development in utero? It's only natural as you get to know the, uh, get the idea of a baby growing inside you, you're going to start chatting to the baby, potentially singing to the baby, reading books to your baby. And it's not actually done in vain because they can hear you. In fact, around 16 weeks of pregnancy, it's likely that the structures are well established enough that your baby can actually start detecting some limited noises. So some of these are sounds that you might not hear yourself, 
like the gurgling of your tummy or the breathing in and out of air in your lungs. So it's quite incredible what they can actually hear. And around 24 weeks, babies have actually been shown to turn their heads towards noise. So it might be your voice, it might be a favourite song that they're listening to, but I think that's absolutely incredible that already they're developing that um, you know, tactile sense of response. Why bonding with your bump is important. So a baby uses that sense of hearing even more as they develop in the third trimester. They touch and learn about his or her own body in the surrounding womb. So they move their hands, they actually even start to clasp and grasp things and they practice that sucking movement as well. A baby's eyes now can detect bright lights and dark lights. So when you go to bed at night, they're starting to learn, okay, this is time to sleep. Some of you probably notice that that's when they decide to wake up the most. That's okay, that's their pattern of movement. And that's really important time for you to bond with them and know that if they didn't have that pattern of movement and that's normally when they move a lot, that's reason for you to say, hang on, something's not right, I wanna be checked. So by the time the third trimester rolls around, you and your baby have established your very own routine. And what's really, really important is to get to know that every baby, every body, and every pregnancy is different. So what might be normal for you might be very abnormal for somebody else. So whatever is normal for you and your baby, it's important to get to know that. You are a team and you can respond accordingly to that. Get to know what they like. Do they like when you touch their belly, your belly? Are they tactile? Do they like listening to your music or something different? I know that Alfie, for example, she liked listening to Haim. I'd never heard of them when I first started listening to them, heard them on the radio, and I thought, well, that's good. I'll buy that CD. She danced around every time I played that CD. So it was really interesting. She already had mu music that she liked listening to. Likewise, there was music she didn't like listening to and she was very, very quiet when that came on. But there was a book that I could read that always made her move around. So if ever I felt, I wanna just hear, feel her move, I read this little book that I loved when I was little actually, and she would move around. So get to know what your baby likes, what their triggers are, what makes them move and what doesn't. So it's really important that you get to know who your baby is, how your baby is, and if there is any change to respond immediately. Don't wait. If your baby is a really active person, chances are they were really active in utero. Who here like, you know, likes to run marathons or is a super, super active person? Okay, so you are? Okay, good. Chances are you were probably really active when she was inside. If you are really docile and really chilled out and you like going to the movies, reading books, sunbaking on the beach, chances are your baby's pretty chilled, pretty relaxed inside. So you get a little bit of a taste of what that baby is going to be like. That can help prepare you for life outside the womb. So some common pregnancy advice. So I'm gonna give you some facts on general pregnancy advice that you, I'm sure, will have all heard about. And I am going to give you a reason why I'm giving you this information, because it's about the stats around it. Perhaps you know um, that Down syndrome, for example, is the most common chromosomal abnormality in pregnancy. That's why we're offered a test at 12 weeks to see if everything is okay to reduce our chances of that or to um, preempt our chances of that. Sometimes um, they need extra care as they grow, their families um, want to be prepared for their development and health. So we're offered that test. And did you know that your chances, let's say in your mid thirties of having a baby born with Down syndrome are one in over 1000. And you can reduce those chances by having that test. Listeria. Another common thing that people talk about in pregnancy, I'm sure that if you go to the supermarket as a, a large pregnant woman and order and buy a nice block of creamy cheese or some deli meats, chances are someone's gonna say, don't eat that, you can't eat that, you know you can't eat that in pregnancy, right? Your chances of contracting the listeriosis infection whilst pregnant are one in over 20,000. Why am I telling you this? They're two very common scenarios that we're told about in pregnancy. What we're not told about is stillbirth. Perhaps it seems unnecessary. Surely it doesn't happen now. Surely it's medieval, but in fact, no. You've heard me say before that six babies every day are stillborn in Australia. But we have a way of preventing 50% of those stillbirths. And that's incredible. We need to help to save these babies' lives. And you are that key. So in Australia, more than 2,000 babies are stillborn every year. So I said to you, 
chances of contracting um, listeriosis in pregnancy, one in over 20,000. Chances in your mid-30s of having a baby with Down syndrome prior to that test, chances are one in over 1,000. Your chances of experiencing a stillbirth in pregnancy are one in 135. So why don't we talk about it? Why aren't we given these tools to get to know our baby prior to birth? That's what we're trying to do at Still Aware, encourage you to get to know your baby, monitor their movements and respond accordingly. So Still Aware, as I said, is purely focused on raising awareness and we're the only not-for-profit charity that are raising awareness and education to see this happen in Australia. A baby's movements are an indication that they are well. A moving baby tends to be a healthy baby. And we do know that based on studies and research that when a baby is not well in utero, they will move less, which means not as strong and not as often. And you have the key to knowing that. By knowing their pattern of movement, you can respond accordingly. A baby's movement can be anything from a kick, swish, a roll, a flutter. Um, and the type of movement may change in terms of if they are small and contracted in space, you may not be able to feel a big kick because they don't have enough, enough room to do so but you'll still be able to feel the movements. What's really important to know is a baby's pattern of movements do not change throughout your pregnancy. The regularity of that movements do not change. The feeling might change, it might become a roll or a swish. In the beginning it's a flutter, in the middle it's a stab, a jab and a poke. It changes as that develops, but the pattern doesn't and that's really, really important. It's also really important to know that a baby's movements do not stop it's a common misconception of pregnancy that when you go into labour or before you go into labour, a baby will stop moving. It is not true. A baby will move throughout pregnancy, right up to birth and during labour, your baby will continue to move, regardless of whether you have a natural um, child deli birth delivery, a vaginal delivery or a C-section. The baby will keep moving. Now, do not put off calling until the next day. If it's 3am and you don't feel right, just call the, the doctor, call the midwife, call the hospital, go straight in. Don't wait, even if your appointment with your obstetrician is the next day, do not wait. As I mentioned before, prompt response to a baby's decreased or erratic increase in movement is really, really important to do so. So don't worry about phoning. It's important that your doctors do know how you're feeling, how the movements of your baby are going. It's really important to do so. Now, it's best not to wait to respond to an irregular movement pattern. Some common misconceptions. Doesn't a baby slow down before birth? I've touched on that before. It's be conscious of your baby's movement, yes, but it will not slow down, as I mentioned before. And if, some, if I have something to eat or drink, will that get my baby moving? Think about it in your walk of life. If you were feeling ill, you went well and you had a glass of orange juice, a coffee, chocolate, whatever to give you a bit of a sugar fix. It might give you a little bit of a sugar fix and make you feel like you had a bit more energy right then and there. But it doesn't make you feel better. It doesn't change the situation. So if you're thinking, I'm going to have a glass of orange juice or a Coke or something sugary to try and get my baby moving, you need to go in and see your doctor. Don't delay by laying down and thinking, I'm going to have a juice or see how this baby goes just go in. Don't waste the time trying to wake your baby up. Isn't it okay if my baby moves 10 times a day or 10 times in 24 hours? Now look, we're trying to change the misuse of information. It's a common misconception that 10 movements in, in a whole day is okay, 10 movements in two hours is okay. Whatever is normal for you and your baby is what's okay. For example, in my second pregnancy with Alfie's uh, big brother, or little brother, sorry. I felt 25 movements in 15 minutes. I did that three times a day because that's what made me feel comfortable. So I counted to a certain amount that suited me. You don't have to count to feel comfortable. You might say, at lunchtime, I feel a really like common amount of movements. At dinner time, I feel a lot of movements. When my husband comes home from work or my partner comes home from work, I feel a lot of movements. I feel really excited. The baby goes crazy in a really good way. That's what's going to remain constant for you. In a similar way, if your baby doesn't move a lot and that's common for you, that's okay too. 
a baby's movements vary from four to 100 every hour, depending on your baby. So if your baby's a chilled out baby, it's gonna be a chilled out baby throughout the whole pregnancy. If your baby's really active, like my two children were, then they're going to be really active. The other thing that might interfere with you feeling the movements is having an anterior placenta. That means a placenta that lays at the front. So you may not feel movements until well after 24 weeks. That's okay too. Whatever is normal for you and your baby and your pregnancy is what's normal for you. But feel like and do know that you can ask for more care. If you need to know that that baby's okay and ask for an extra scan, you can do that. Is an increase of movements a good sign? Sure, a baby gets stronger during childbirth, a child, uh, sorry, during uh, pregnancy, and sure, childbirth too. Um, but what we do need to know is if it's an erratic amount of increase in movements, if your baby has a change in movements that feels crazy, nuts, and, and you just think this is really, really strange, that's a reason for you to go in too. If something feels irregular and uncomfortable for you, go in. So how does a pregnant mother bond with her bump? I know that it's going, I'm going to run out of time soon, so I will just run you through how to do this. In the third trimester, monitor your baby's bump but baby, um, every day. So pick a time when your baby's active. I've talked to you about that, when the baby is most active. Pick that time. Don't choose when they have a normal sleep cycle. You're not going to feel the movements that you want. To get started, sit with your feet up. You might like to lie down on your left side. Um, on your left side, you'll tend to feel the baby move a lot more because it's uh, taking the pressure off of um, the artery. Now, does your baby li listen, like to listen to you talk, respond to music? We touched on that before. Think about the things that trigger your baby's movements. You might like to do that. You can choose to log that in a chart, an app, make a note in your diary. And whatever you choose to do, consistency is key. So once you and your baby have established a routine, that's what sh should remain consistent. That's what you should be paying attention to. As I've said before, if anything seems different or irregular, you need to contact your healthcare provider straight away. Even if it is the middle of the night, go in, do not wait. So I mentioned to you about Alfie. This is Alfie and my husband and I. And I briefly introduced you to my little girl at this talk. Now, I wish that someone had told me the importance of monitoring my baby's movements. Because if they had, Alfie would be here today. Hours before, if I had gone in knowing that her movements had decreased dramatically, I would have saved her life. I didn't know this. I wasn't given the tools that I'm giving you today. It's really, really important that you know your baby and you advocate for them. You are the best advocate because you know them better than anybody. And so I urge you, if something doesn't feel right, if something feels irregular, just go in. Don't wait. Because then you could be taking your baby home. This is Alfie's brother, Archie. And in my second pregnancy, I felt empowered, counting the kicks, monitoring my baby's movements and bonding with my bump actually alleviated a great deal of my anxiety. I felt connected to Archie because I knew that I could speak up and ask for the care that he and I deserved. I didn't wait to see what the doctor told me to do. I didn't wait to get the advice from a medical professional because I know him best and I responded accordingly and he was birthed when he needed to be. And he came here safe and sound well and I got to take him home and even to this day it feels completely amazing and he is the light of my life and this one will be too and just as Alfie is as well so best of luck in your pregnancies if you have any further questions or want to discuss anything about your pregnancy or how to monitor baby's movements or where the placenta lies etc we have a midwife at our stand on at R19 which is in the last um, aisle as you enter the the uh, exhibition centre, more than happy to chat with you. And you can also contact us by email, Facebook or online too. So take care. Thank you so much for listening.